Hey, y'all, what's going on? This is Keith, and you are listening to Thank God for the Group Chat. Today is a, a special episode. We have no clue how we're going to do this, but we're going to do it. Well, we got some sort of a clue, but we're going to do it. And our track record has shown that when we do out of the ordinary podcast episodes, that they seem to be pretty good and you guys like when the monotony is shaking up a little bit so we'll see we'll see what happens um today i got my man t dewitt here with me what up what up what up he was here last week um y'all really seem to enjoy last week's podcast i'm glad to hear it um so we'll have i'm gonna be with him for the first half and um, Alyssa Chester will be joining us um, later on in the episode. Uh, so I don't know if we have any upon further reviews uh, from last episode. I don't remember. And we, we are terrible with those. <laughs> we're getting back to you about things that we were wrong about, but we'll shoot again for next week. By the way, this is episode one, 110. So this should be a special episode. Oh, yeah. One ten. That's one ten. Happy to be here. We I'm happy have, to be here for it. I'm I'm glad that you're here too. We have done one hundred and ten episodes. Again, like yeah, we just decided to shake up the monotony. Um, Lon and um Victoria, like just allowing them to rest. Um, just doing um, what does the NBA call it? Load management for them. No load management. I don't need load management. Re- recouping and stuff. Yo, so did you watch any of the NBA games? I honestly did not. I've seen like highlights and stuff, mm-hmm. but I haven't like I didn't sit and watch any of them. I so I was the main one last week saying, yeah, I could watch the NBA without Kobe. Right. And this week came and I was like, I didn't watch nothing about no. Kobe. No. But no. <laughs> I, I didn't watch it. I still I haven't seen the NBA like well, my team is the Warriors, so I've been watching the NBA without Kobe, but like not, you know, you know, postpartum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, post posthumously, not without Kobe. And um, but I'm waiting. I'm I'm trying to get in there. I started following the Clippers, and I've been mm-hmm. following the Trailblazers, but the Trailblazers just keep disappointing me. So I'm not going to follow them anymore. Like I'm gonna follow them, but I don't have faith that they're going to do anything worth doing. Anything. No, yeah, like hope, hope. If I'm here next week, uh, if you invite me back, I'm, I'm. Fam, protected. you. I want you to be a regular. Like you just have to say the oh, word. Dope. You, you here? No, so, so hopefully, like next time, I will have watched <laughs> something. But I'm nah, playing. I, on. I was literally, yeah. Like I didn't watch nothing. What you Especially, do? Especially. Um. What did I do this weekend? Oh, I filmed the video. Uh. Dope. I filmed the video. Um, worked on some music stuff. Um, started like writing an R and B song for one of my friends who's like a singer. So, and that's nice. my weekend was just music, music, and then you know work stuff like worked on my resume. You know, this whole this whole pandemic got stuff crazy. So just yeah. just in case anything happens to my job because the way it's looking for my company, so I just wanted to have my resume ready. So that's what I did, bro. Nice. Nice, yeah, man. Very good. Very productive. Very productive week, it seemed like, for you. Man, I'm one of those people where I, I should never be like, I'm bored. I should never say that. So then even if I... What are you... Like, I like, huh? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, I like, even if I'm resting, I want to rest in that time. Like, I, like, like I want to rest. I want to read a book. I want to... Like, if I'm just chilling, I'm chilling. But it, I shouldn't... I like, if the thought process crosses my mind of, I'm kind of bored. I think like, nah, it's something I should be doing. And that's how I, that's how I am. That's how I operate. Do you think that's something that should be intrinsic in all men? Do you think that's something that should be like instilled in all men to like never be bored? Because I'm, I'm of that school of thought. Like no man should be saying that he's bored. Like because there's always something to do. I think women say women, it's okay for women to say that they bored. It's not mm-hmm. okay for men mm-hmm. to say that they're bored. Like if you like like you said, if you're gonna rest, rest because rest is important. So it's okay to not do anything, but it's not okay to be bored. Like like yeah, any man I, that you respect, do you hear him ever say, Man, I'm bored? Like that's childish. 
No, and that's like that's my um I don't know if my dad my dad was in the military, so he mm-hmm. always instilled in me to just be like, yeah, like I remember one time straight up, he hit me up. No, oh, <laughs> not hit me up, but like growing up, he came into my room and he was like, Hey son, cut the grass. And I was like, Hey dad, though, it's my it's my birthday. And he was like, And the grass still need to be cut. And I was like, <laughs> You right, yeah. So yeah. So so that's always been me, like, like dang, and if it need to be done, I need to figure mm-hmm. out a way to do it or something so yeah i don't think like men should be bored yeah. like you it's it like being complacent is another thing so you got to work out of that like that's natural like to to wallow and be complacent or and or to like what's the word like to procrastinate that's another issue in and of itself but to be like i'm bored like nah fam you don't have time to be bored there's so many things that you could be and probably should so be doing things. you know go build like, some <laughs> oh, what you said, and then, and then, and then in itself, I feel like it helps us build our mental. I help. I feel like me constantly, like knowing how I want to, what I want to do with myself, even uh, translates into how I treat other people in some sort of mm-hmm. facet. So, yeah, man, I, I stay going. Well, yeah. Well, this weekend, I'll, I'll let you guys know. I, I don't think I should prolong the news. If you see me looking down at my phone. I'm looking at pictures of my newborn baby daughter. Wow. Congratulations, man. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, man. Thank you, sir. I'm I am I am I am confused out of my mind. Well I, yeah. she, I imagine. I ain't gonna lie. She I don't I don't like how babies look. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> It's like I kind of know what you mean, but it, there's another part of me that's like, like, what do you mean? Like, I feel yeah. like I know what you mean. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> like. Yeah, so her her um her grand one of her grandmothers, not my mother, but her grandmother is sending mm-hmm. me pictures, and it's surreal. It looks like it's like not that she doesn't look like me; it just looks like it's someone else's baby. It's, you know, it's gonna change though, bro. Probably, you know that changes that they get older. You, you start being like, "Oh, I do see you and me." Oh. No, of course, of course. Um, some some of them you in some of the pictures you can say, "Oh yeah, that's Keith's daughter." You know what I mean? But I'm just mm-hmm. saying, like, you gotta get like when you look at it, it's like, "Oh snap, that's my kid. That's my kid." You know? Yeah. Um, so, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. I heard this comedian say. Uh, and I don't know, I, I'm not a dad or anything. I just got dogs, man. So, but mm-hmm. so this comedian, he said, um, moms, as soon as they're like, like they conceive the kid and all that stuff, they are mothers. Even while the, the baby's growing inside of them, they are mothers. Yeah. Fathers, fathers, their dads, like when, when the baby come out, so then it's like, yeah. it's like a part of them. They have like a gear has to switch. Like, oh yeah. no. Like, and that's how he, like he said it way funnier but basically that's how he kind of described it like and man honestly that was my school of thought until until my daughter's mother her name is Bailey Bailey is my daughter's name um Mm -hmm. until Bailey's mom conceived right Mm -hmm. that was my thought I'm like but it didn't dawn on me like because I felt like I had to walk in that in that space of like, well, I'm not a dad yet. I'm not a dad yet. People wanted to tell me happy father's day. And I would get upset because I'm like, I'm not a dad yet. I'm not a dad yet. And it took one of my, one of my friends from preschool breaking it down to me. She said, you have to, you have had to move like a father from the moment that you found out that she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Like your life changed that moment. Mm. And I'm like, it did. I started thinking differently. I started thinking way less selfishly. I had to think for someone else. And the decision making always meant someone else. Like if I was thinking about moving somewhere, it entailed her. If I thought about getting a job somewhere, I'm like, well, this won't give me time to be able to spend time with her. You know what I mean? Stuff like that, buying things, so on and so forth. The people that I wanted around me, you know what I'm saying? Because the people that would be around me would subsequently be people that would be around her and or directly or indirectly influence her. So like the same thing 
that's true for moms is true for men. And that's a that's I think that's a conversation that I want to talk to Alyssa about later on. Is like man, like like just the 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 sheer neglect and the negating, for lack of a better term, of fathers, and especially black fathers. I've experienced that on multiple levels during this this past 12 month experience. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um so yeah, I think that's a good talking point. I think I think we cuz the way so Alyssa will be joining us later, but the way that she talks about things is like she she has a therapist and so she she goes through therapy and so she kind of like therapists are lit. I have yeah, very been. important. So she reasons with yeah. you like a therapist because she's been going through it for so long, and um, she's a I great listener. Mine. Great listener. I mean, I don't miss mine. What? I mine totally basically found- told me that we he didn't. I didn't have to see him anymore. What? Okay, so there After are some bad ones because I I I'm had not saying one. He was a bad one. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So I I had one and he wasn't a bad one at first. But then I would say, I could say, I'm not going to say everything I said in therapy, but I, I said mm-hmm. a whole bunch of stuff. And then he ended it all with, you're a good person, Tobias. And it showed me, <laughs> if I told you what I said, you would have been like, so why did you, like, that had nothing to do? And it sh- I was like, are you even listening to me? But my, the last <laughs> one I had, the last one I had, he was dope. Um, yeah, I can't okay. like, yeah, he was fire. Like, like there was certain stuff that I was doing that I knew was wrong. And I remember like the speech when I realized, I was like, okay, this dude's kind of ill was when he was like, uh, Tobias, I'm going to tell you stuff. He's like, I'm, he's like, it's not my job to make you do anything. This is my job to tell you, like to tell you and talk to you. So that way you can make healthy decisions and go in a certain direction that is healthier for you and benefit you. So I'm not going to say you need to do this. It's my job to make um, you uh, get you to a point where you're guided to make the decisions, the healthy decisions yourself. But mm. I was doing something crazy, not crazy, but I was making choices for other people. And it had got so bad that eventually he was like, but I'm telling you, you got to make the, self, the choices for yourself. But you know what? On this instance, Tobias, I'm going to tell you, I'm not just going to say no. I'm going to say heck no. So he was like, straight up, like, you got to stop. And he was yeah. right. Like, he was good. I miss him. He's dope. Shout out to you. Shout out to, shout out to Dr. Kovner. Well. Man, um, yeah, so we'll talk about that later on. More on that later on, I guess. <laughs> um, therapy is necessary. You're not crazy for needing therapy. We all need some form of therapy. If we've lived at all, we need some form of therapy. Um, mm-hmm. Normalize going to therapy. How about that? Um, that should be a t-shirt. Yeah. But yeah. I don't, I'm tired of normalize being normalized. I'm tired oh, of yeah. that phrase. I'm tired of the word normalize. I'm like, why'd y'all just learn normalize? I, yeah, you know, people learn a word and you're like, toxic, 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 toxic. Normalize, mm-hmm. normalize, normalize, normalize. You're like, dang, man. Cap, 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 cap. <laughs> like, this not even. Uh, let's talk about someone who, who has not been getting their just due, like all of those words mm-hmm. that we just mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. Brandy, Brandy dropped an album this past Friday. She did. Um, now, some background on Brandy for those of you who think that you know her and don't. Um, Brandy is known by many a uh, expert singer to be the quote unquote vocal bible. Okay, um, this album that she dropped is called B7. This will be her seventh album. Um, and she released it, and I and Tobias hit me up about it. Alana posted about it. Um, and a lot of people have been posting about it actually. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't finished the uh, I haven't finished one of my favorite podcasts, the Joe Budden podcast. They I think they got into it. I haven't finished it, so I need to listen to them. I'm glad I didn't finish it because I don't like my thoughts being dictated by other by other thoughts. I'm like, here's my sheer thoughts. And then here, and then I'll go back and listen and see if I'm crazy or if 
they align with other thoughts. You know what I mean? But I want always want my podcast listeners to get my unfiltered thought and not filter through someone else's opinion. You know, I think that's, I don't think that's fair to them. Like you came for my opinion. You ain't come for Joe Budden and Rory's opinion, you know? And I hardly agree with those guys, but, <laughs> but, uh, so I'm going to read the description of the album and then we could delve into it. Um, this is super important. Beyonce is, is a lot, a lot of people consider Beyonce the vocal Bible. Um, Beyonce, am I saying Beyonce? Am I saying Beyonce right now? Lord, yeah, forgive yeah, yeah, yeah. me. Br- <laughs> Brandy. Yeah, I, when you said Beyonce, I was like, is he finna make a comparison? I'm to- not, because <laughs> in my opinion, there's no comparison. No, that's why outside like, of oh, them being that's- singers and then both being amazing singers. True. Beyonce also dropped a project this week, which I thought I was seen like, that one yet. do you think that there's a beef between Beyonce and Brandy? I don't. I think. Do you think that- there's like a beef that we don't know about? You know. There'd be a lot of shade in the industry, man. Yes. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised, but I also I don't think that was I think like I heard about Beyonce um, striking that deal with Disney um a minute ago. I, I kind of knew about that before I knew that Brandy was dropping an album and I'm a Brandy fan. So I, I part of me almost feels like maybe well I don't know. I feel like it just kind of timing, it just happened that way, but it's kind of hard to say because I do feel them, like, yeah, one of them could have held off a week. Yeah. And I know, like, there are two different types of projects because one is a vis- was it like a visual album or a musical mm-hmm. of sorts, and one is just a straight-up album. But I feel like there was another time when Brandy was doing something and Beyonce dropped Beyonce. something at the same time. I feel like you're right. Like and it you, wasn't you said- too long ago. You might kind of be like it might be one of those unspoken things where she like silently is just like I'm like throw shade on your career, but I'm not gonna make it like like I feel like Beyonce if she got like beef with somebody, she's not gonna be that person that's gonna be in a song like I'm beefing with you. She might throw like subtle hints. She married. To, she, she's married to the king of that. She's yeah. married. She's married to the king of the of the. Uh, he's the guy that will throw subliminals so all day <laughs> and won't say exactly who he's talking about. She Jay- is, yeah, Jay- she is. Jay Z beef with Joe Budden for years. I, I didn't know that. Yes. What? Yes. He beef with him on um, like it's super apparent on um Blueprint Three. It is. I gotta yes. revisit that album. And Joe I Budden responded. Thought- and Joe Budden responded on one of his mixtapes. He said, um, um, he said, and not to let off a shot, but I'm better than hot. They don't need a reminder if they never forgot. Because, so you know, because Jay Z had the song <laughs> Reminder and he talked about Joe in the, in that joint. Yeah. That's a dope, that's a dope comeback bar. Yeah, that's bro. that's my that's my dog. That's, that's a dope comeback Joe. bar. That's why I love Joe though. <laughs> I'm a fan. Like we, I'm a fan of. I'm gonna let you talk. I'm a fan of the underdog. Me too. Beyond, I feel like yeah. Brandy is my is one of my favorite singers, but I'm a fan of the under of the super talented. Forget forget the underdog. I'm a fan of the talented person that doesn't get the recognition that they need or deserve. Brandy is one of those people. Brandy used to be. America's sweetheart, and then at some point, once she had that baby, everything, <laughs> everything just went elsewhere or whatever. Um, Omarion is one of my favorites, but but Omarion is dope, bro. He is, but like we about to get into this about like artists that play to the sound of the time and don't. You know, I mean, they just be too into their head so they don't create the music that we love them for. They start creating music that they think we're going to like. And I'm like, fam, just oh, sing, dog. Yeah. And that's that's just, Omarion's just problem for me. Yeah. Um, okay. I feel like Brandy didn't do that. I feel like Brandy made what was for Brandy on this. Album. All right. So, all right, let's 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 go. <laughs> let's go. Let's talk about it. All right. So I'm going to read this the Apple Music description of um, mm-hmm. 
My baby is light skinned. Wow. <laughs> have a light skinned baby. <laughs> you light skinned though. Well, no, me, I'm not. You're lighter than me. I am. I feel like we're the same tone. We're not. You're lighter. You're definitely like three tones lighter than me. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm one would call me light skinned, but you. Uh-huh. Um, and I think I I, I, I clarify everybody like either light or dark. I don't be doing like all the middles and stuff. <laughs> I'm on. I'm. I think I'm the. I think I start the dark skin um, spectrum. Oh, okay. I remember Adrian. Uh, you know our friend Adrian. He used to when we lived together. He used to always because you know he's dark skin, mm-hmm. and I was messy. I ain't even gonna lie. And he used to always be like, "Bro, why are you messy? You would have been in the house." And I remember <laughs> I used funny. to always be like, That's funny. I was like, "Yeah," I was like, "Oh, got you." That's funny. Yeah, you would have been in the house. It's funny. It's it's also super sad, but <laughs> it is but sad, but it is sad, but it's funny. Yeah. Um, so here's the B seven description because we we about to I'm I feel like we about to talk about this project for real for real, and I feel like you and I are going to argue, not I argue, know. I not not argue. I mean, because I know you don't argue, and like you had this way of like not arguing. You had this way of of saying. You have a you have this way of voicing that you disagree without arguing. But I'm from Jersey, I took, and I just be like, <laughs> "No." I took I took a I took a test, bro. Apparently, I'm like one of like two percent or seven percent in the world, or some like a small percentage of people in the world that aren't like you're either a this or a that. Mm-hmm. And it, I took the test, and I was neither. It turned my answer was like I'm a mediator, <laughs> like I'm that yeah. person that's just like, "Come on, everybody." And yeah, I was like, you yeah, see the kinda. you see both sides all the time. I do all like, the time. You're like, I feel you. But I also see this, and I'm like, nah, but I see it, but that side is stupid. So Adrian used to hate that junk, bro. He'd be like, no. Yeah, you gotta pick a side when it's with your friends. That's that's for sure. You gotta pick, pick a side. side I, I, I hate those cats. I hate those cats when y'all don't pick a side and I need you to pick a side. Like, let me know what side you on, fam. You know what I mean? I could pick a side. I don't I don't mind if I'm like the only person that that's on the side that I'm on, but like, yo, pick a side. You know what I mean? Like, in, in tell my, me you think I'm wrong and tell me you think I'm right. In my head, I actually visualized that. I saw, like, for that, whatever reason, we're, like, somewhere and it's, like, a line. And then you're, like, be on, and you're telling people, be on my side. And then it's just, like, you on that side. And then, like, everybody else is on the other side. Like, nah, yeah. I'll keep. And I, and I, I, go ahead. I never tell anybody, be on my side. I never tell mm-hmm. be on me because I feel like I make compelling arguments. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? As a person that is a is a um apologist, one of my goals is to make compelling arguments to make you see where I'm coming from. You know what I mean? I want you to know where I'm coming from to make an argument to where you're like, oh, okay, I get it. You know what I mean? But, you know, I don't want you just to, like, be on my side for the sake of being on my side. Yeah. You feel me? That's not going to happen. Okay, good. Here we go. Um, yeah, because people like that have no backbone. You, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. You fall for anything. Mm-hmm. What did our president say? If you fool me, you can't get fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brandy's voice has aged like fine wine. Eight years since her last album and 26 removed from her debut, the singer, affectionately nicknamed The Vocal Bible, still sounds at once fresh and refined on B7. Lyrically, the album traces the map of love from its passionate expressions, Rather Be, Rather Be is one of the, name of the, one of the names of the songs, um, to Gray Area Affections, I Am More, another song, as well as more interior and exterior spaces. Um, Lucid Dreams would be one of the interior songs and Baby Mama would be one of the exterior. Though it's a master class in riffs and runs, harmony and control, on Borderline, her signature wispy tone layers almost as if to form its own kind of element while her voice shifts from shadowy and set back to front and center. No Tomorrow, which immediately follows, features a stripping production that allows Brandy to carry the momentum and carry it she does. When she sings lines like, can you tell me why you still love me and why I feel so deep like back at the altar 
or you're feeling your way through me. I want to touch you. So it's a brief example of how just she uses her voice as an instrument unto itself. B7 is also about the details. The transition between unconditional oceans and rather be is seamless in both sound and mood. While Say Something plays with cadence to imbue the track with a certain intensity that sets it apart from the others. Love Again, a collaboration with Daniel Caesar, answers from the for the dearth of old school style duets in contemporary R&B with the two engaging in a tender interplay throughout. By the time Bi- Bi- Bipolar arrives to usher the album to a close, it's hard to imagine what's left for the singer to do. And yet she stuns all over again. The ballad is a wrenching kiss off the kiss off filter through a metaphor of how romantic dysfunction can mirror and cause mental dysfunction, but it's sung like the gospel, a true benediction. B7. Yo. Who wrote, wrote that? that? Who wrote that? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Who wrote that? <laughs> I had to read it. I had to read it. I said, this is Yo, <laughs> That was dope, bro. Mm-hmm. They need to write like, I like intros to stuff, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they have a job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they have a job in doing this. I'm, yeah. All right. So, th- so thoughts thoughts on the album. I. Or how you want to do it? You want to do it track by track? Let's go. You want to you want to do an overview and then we go track by track. Yeah, we can do overview and then track by track. Um, right, I might ahead. stumble on a track by track. I I listened to it twice, like two or three times. Okay. And um, but sometimes. I wasn't really like seeing like 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 the like the description says some of the songs kind of would go into another song and I'll still be thinking I was listening to the last song mm. and then realize I'd be like yo this song long and then I look down and I'm like oh it's another song so mm. uh but overall I personally think it um I think it was very a very brandy album uh I think it was good but also at the same time I think it how you listen to this album matters. It's not an album that I feel like I could just like, cause when I was listening to it casually, yeah, I feel like it wasn't sitting well with me if I'm being honest. Like, but then like, like if I listen to it through, like when I listen to it in a car, I feel like yeah. it wasn't sitting well to, with me. Okay. I, if I told Alexa to, to play it, please don't do nothing Alexa cause she'd be sensitive. Um, I, but then when I listen to it in my headphones, and sat with it like the last time and actually like looked at the lyrics. Mm-hmm. There was even, um, if you guys have Apple Music and you have the app, um, I recommend listening to, I think it's the first song. A cool thing about the first song is if you listen to it on Apple Music and follow the lyrics, there's a part in the song where she says, um, like the goat, and in the parentheses, it says Whitney Houston. And it's, that was that that little that little tidbit was dope to me because she don't say it in the song. She just mm. says like the goat. And so then, I guess they did I a assume. genius. They did a genius type of situation. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's what she thought." I, Genius.com, I would have known. By the way, yeah, yeah, I love genius. Um, but so overall, I feel like um, I feel like this is a a headphones type of album. Um, there were some songs that I was just kind of like, uh, um, on, and then there were some songs where I was just like, "This is really good," but then I really feel like even though the the lyrics are kind of like, like some of them are like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it's hard to, some of them are kind of like, not vague, but it's like she, it's kind of like when a rapper says a bar and then it's not really clear what the bar means, but it was like a cool metaphor. I don't know like how to, how to like a lot, I know a lot of the lyrics on there are kind of like not straightforward to me, some of them, yeah, but, yeah. but then, but then um, actually listening to it in my headphones, even if the lyrics wasn't straightforward, I feel like there was a part of me that feels like on this album, Brandy's kind of like being really vulnerable, even mm. if I missed it at first. Like I might hear Borderline and think like, oh, this is a cool song. because That's probably one of my favorite songs from the album. But yeah. then when I really listened to the album as a whole, I was like, yo, I feel like Brandy went through some, like I, I was just joking with our friend Xavier earlier and I was telling him, I was like, I feel like secretly Brandy has a crazy side that that, that we don't know about. My, yeah, yeah. Because he said the same. He looked the same. Like say, because I was like, because on the album she was like saying a whole bunch of stuff where I feel like she must have like went through a phase where because I feel like 
if I could count on my fingers how many times Brandy said, or if I had a dollar for every time Brandy said something about being crazy, I probably have twelve dollars or something. But she, on that album, she was talking about me. I realized like I was really listening. I was like, "Yo, she really talking about like she was going crazy." But she's saying it in such a beautiful way that it's like, "Have you oh, seen okay, the yeah. Have you seen the video?" I saw the video. Okay, in the video, she's in a straight jacket. She was. She yeah. was. And, don't and get I don't no crazier that, than that. Yeah, I don't think she was just doing that because she thought it looked cool, y'all. Like, listen to that album. I really think she was like, she's been going through something. Like, that bi- bipolar, she ends on that note. She talks about going schizo. She talks about going crazy on songs. It's like, like yo, she's... Yeah, so overall, mm-hmm. I think it was a good listen. There were some songs I could do about. Um, there were some songs... Songs you could do without. What are these songs? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know the names. I'm gonna run them. I'll run them by you. I promise. I will. All right. So the first, you, what you, what you got? You got Apple Music. You can pull. I it got up. Apple Music. Yeah. Saving all my love. Yeah. Well, let me go before first we do it. Before we go, before yeah, we do yeah. that. Let, let me. Well, grade it. Grade it right now. What do you give it? I give it in just in general as an album as an album all encompassing everything that you would look for in an album what are you giving it and you can even break down why you give it the grade that you gave it like when you talk about what you're looking for in the album um I give it a 7 or 8 out of 10 yeah wow like probably a strong seven. Wow. Wow. What? So so a seven would be like a what? Like a seven is like a C plus to you or a B. That's like a low B. Yeah, like, you like give it a low like, B. I I can't give it a ten. <laughs> I don't believe in tens. Yeah, it's hard it's hard to give something. I don't a 10. know. I might believe in tens. I was gonna say I believe in tens. There's I'm, albums where I'm just like <laughs> when it when it comes to albums, I might believe in tens. Yeah, and so then I can't give it a 10, and then um, a 9 seems very strong for it. Like, yeah. vocally, it, vocally, and, like, she did some stuff on there that's definitely a 9, 10. You know what I mean? Like, there's some stuff where, like, that bipolar song, I was like, yo, she show, it's like, it's like, dang, man, you you already up 40 points. Stop dunking. Like, that's what mm. I, that, like, there were some points where it's just like, she was mm. just going in, and I was like, yo, you dope. Like, so, so vocally, Mm. vocally yeah but then like like i said the the whole overall experience the fact that the fact like there's some albums where i give it a 10 i know it's the album where you gotta sit with it but then also at the same time even if i'm not sitting with it i could just put it on and enjoy it this album there was times where i was I, i almost even like forgot i was listening to it or something like it was just so like flowy yeah and then and then a little monotonous at at times where mm-hmm. and, and and then of course she had this one song I can't even remember the name of it where it felt like it jolted me back and I was like oh okay yeah and probably so baby like, mama that's a good song um so and I don't think it was that one it, uh, it might one. not have been that one um it might have been I know the song you're talking about as soon as I said baby mama I was like nah it's not that song it's yeah. this song um uh say something not say something. No, no. I know the song you talk about. Hold on, because you probably felt you probably felt the same I thing, did. bro. I did. I know the song you talk about. It's this one. It is say something. It is say something. So, so that like that right there. That's fire, bro. Yeah. Make you do the same face, bro. Yeah. It was this one. Yeah. It was. It was this mm-hmm. one. And, and so then, like, I had kind of like, I kind of like felt like I was listening to like a whole stint. And then I do like some of the transitions into other songs because there's parts where like the song will be over, but then she'll do like a little like prelude at the end of a, of a song or like a little like 
something at the end of the song that kind of extended the what she was already doing. So I thought that was yeah. beautiful and dope. Okay. But so yeah, like I so I, I but yeah, like I said, it's not a it's not a ten for me. But yeah, because of those those lows and because of the fact that um the mon- I the know monotony. That I would yeah, I had I, I say seven, bro. That's what that's what I'm going with. Um I followed Brandy since I was four. Well, since she came out, since she came out, since I was about five years old. This is due to no credit of. This is due to no credit of of mine. This is definitely due to um friend, definitely friend of the show, Allison Robinson. Shout out to you. Her daughter, Alyssa Robinson. Um, we were over at their house one day, and um. She put my sister on. Now, now Alyssa had a vinyl of Brandy's first album. That's I, I believe she had a vinyl of it. And so ever since then, my sister was in love with her. And subsequently, I had to be in love with her because we had to watch Moesha every Wednesday, you know what I mean? Which is now also on um on Netflix. Uh, Netflix at this point. We we might be able to talk about that for a second. Um but you know, yeah. you grew up. You grew up with good music. We grew up with good music, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, but so I know I know a lot about Brandy. I I followed Brandy up until Full Moon, and I was disappointed at Full Moon as a kid. You know what I mean, I remember that Full Moon transition between from from Dark Child on Never Say Never to um to Timberland on Full Moon. Timberland did all of Full Moon, I believe. And it was also at that time was when Timberland was transitioning from Aaliyah to Brandy. Because mm-hmm. Aaliyah had just passed. And so mm-hmm. Timberland wasn't over the over the Aaliyah thing. And then you producing for Brandy, who's a completely different singer from it is apples to oranges the type of artist that these two women are. Rest in peace, Aaliyah. Um, I don't think Aaliyah will argue this. Brandy is the superior vocalist, <laughs> you know, um, where Aaliyah would live in the um, rhythmic and she would live in the um, the tone the tone and the pocket of her voice when Brandy was all over the place and could do a lot. Um, I wound up being like... But that's the thing, right? I've always had love hate relationships with Brandy albums ever since, ever since Never Say Never. Mm-hmm. Those first two albums are phenomenal, like almost unskippable. You know, maybe one or two tracks on on the first album and maybe one or two tracks on the second album. But that once you hit that third all the way up until this one, it's like we want the brandy of old. And that's my issue right now. And I want to I want to start with the good. I'm going to start with the good brandy. I'm well documented in this. Brandy is an amazing vocalist again. You don't you don't get more higher pra- you don't get higher praise than vocal bible who you know what I mean that means people are coming to you to see that's, what they should take from you know what I mean like that's that's super high praise so brandy brandy's talent is never in question my issue is as a brandy apologist she didn't give me a lot to work with mm she didn't give me a lot to go back to the table and say, listen, like to the novice listener, to the novice listener who just hears runs, to the person that just hears high, high, um, high range, to the person that, you know what I mean? They don't hear the intricacies and they don't know when, like, they don't know when something is dope, even though it doesn't appear to be dope. They don't hear, it's, I equate Brandy to, I equate a lot of this album to, to a bass, to a bass guitar, right? Mm-hmm. You don't know that it's there until it's missing, right? And you don't always oh, yeah. know, and you don't always know that the bassist is killing it because he's a bassist or driving the song exactly. Yeah. And 
So I think she had a lot of bass moments, and even though not in tone or in timbre, she was a bass. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying in like the things that the average, that the novice listener would listen and hear and miss. She did a lot of that. She made a singer's album and she made a, let me more over. She made a musician's album. She made an artist album. She made a vocalist album and she played not to the novice listener that would just say, um, yeah, I like Brandy. I would like to hear what she has. It was not Brandy of old. It was not, I'm gonna blow you away singing if you don't know what singing really is. And that, like, I'm like, man, you got to give them at least four songs of, like, just blowing and just, like, just kill Beyonce at her own game, please. Just kill um, cats that think that Monica is your contemporary. Just, you know what I mean? Just kill kill cats that think this. And she never, you know what I mean? I'm going to say maybe two songs she... Yeah, she I was going to say, I feel, I feel like on one or two she did. Bipolar, bye bipolar was that, one of that's them. That's the that's the one that came to my mind. Yeah, and she did it for a little bit on rather be. She did. And I'm like, fam, why don't you sing in that rank? Why don't you sing at that octave? This whole album, a lot of it was in like a was like in a tenor or a second soprano the whole time. That was my issue. Yeah, I'm like, fam. She was like boxing you, with her like arm tied around her back or something, like holding back. And she was killing it, like vocally beast. And I think she played to the vocal Bible. She played to the vocal Bible stigma too much for me. You know what I mean? Um, Jared, uh, J. Paul Sings, I spoke to him. He hit me up about the album. He was like, yo, Brandy's doing some incredible things that people don't even know about. And I said, and that's my problem with this album. Mm. And he was like, yeah, me too. It was crazy. Is my I have my singer friend. Um, I uh, like I told her I was like you should check out the Brady album before I <laughs> before I listened to it. So mm-hmm. I told I was like, oh you should check out the Brandy album before I listen to it. Never recommend anything before you actually can atone to yeah. how it is. Yeah. And so then uh. But I had heard the first song. It was to me. I was like, "Oh, Brandy finna come in and go ham." And so then, after I listened to it, I hit her up and I was like, "Hey, I kind of retract what I said." And she was like, "And she was like, uh, honestly, I started listening to it." And she's like, "And I got to this one song where, like, and she's a singer. And my friend, like, she can actually like, I'll you know, I don't say everybody can sing. Mm. Uh, she can sing, and even she was like." I mean, she's doing dope stuff, but and I was like, you don't even gotta finish the. But I already, yeah, yeah, like that. So even that, my singer friends were like, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you, you created a whole album based off technique. Mm-hmm. The whole album was like, let me show you how dope I am. Let me show you how dope I am. And I'm like, I can't even focus on the lyrics because you. have You've layered the lay. You've layered the lyrics so much. You've layered your voice so much with all of the harmonies and stuff. They dope harmonies, but I lose the feel of the song because I I have to focus elsewhere right now. I don't even know what you're saying half the time without looking at the lyrics. That's why I actually started looking at the lyrics because, like I said, I had to listen to it in my headphones because just on regular listen, I was like, "What's going on at the <laughs> airport?" At the airport. Before you know, because I flew back today from North Carolina, at the airport, mm-hmm. I started look watching the lyrics, and I got where you was get where, where you was getting at. And I was like, okay, lyrically, this helps me understand. Like, it helps me understand the song better, and it makes me like. Excuse me, it makes me like the song more. I'm an old school kid. I'm still the guy that would get the CD and will watch and will read the lyrics as the music is playing. And that's what helps me resonate with songs better. I'm like, cause if I if ever, Lord willing, I ever drop an album, it's going to have lyrics on it. I hate it when that movement started happening. Like cats wanted to save money. So they stopped putting the lyrics down on the, on the um album and stuff. I'm like, nah, I need them. I need them lyrics. But, yeah. um, but man, it was like, I needed you to hit the ball out the park on this one. I needed you to hit the ball out the park. And I think you hit a ground rule double. 
Mm. Mm. Like you, you on base and you got the potential to score, but I needed you to hit a home run. I needed you to hit a grand slam because of all this riding on the legacy of Brandy. Cats yeah. really are comparing you to people that you should not be compared to. Yeah, so I was excited. I thought this was going to be that home run. So I was excited before I even really like got deep into the album. But then once I got deep into it, I was like, hmm. I, I don't mind if albums take me three listens for me to like them. Because once I like them, I might really, really like them. A lot of Fred Hammond albums are like that for me. I hate Fred Hammond albums until like maybe the fifth time through. And I'm like, wait a minute, this song is dope. And some That's songs not- and some songs you gotta go through something to understand them. You know what I mean? Some songs mm-hmm. like you that song be trash until you actually going through whatever it is that you're going through. And then that song plays and it's like, yo, this song is expressing exactly how I feel. But those songs are few and in between. Um, do I think that those? she has those songs inside of there? I do. I also think this. I also think this. Brandy was trying to show all of the cats that are doing this whispery singing and you know the cats that are just doing this melodic singing and this this chill tone singing. She and she was the boss she, at it. Yes, yeah, she was giving them a master class throughout the album. But I'm like, yes, you gave them a master class. You gave them a master class, but you didn't give them a master class at what you do. You know what I'm saying? You gave them a master class at things that you can do but you didn't give them a master class at like things that you do specifically like this. This was like the young kids are doing this. This is what they are into. And I'm going to show them that this is, I could do it and I could do it better. Like, yes, Brandy, you can do it better, but if you're doing it better, you took away from a lot of it. And for that, if we doing one out of 10, it's a six for me. There's four songs that I, there's four songs that like, I would make a playlist out of off of this album thus far. And that's mm. that's rather be So when I said seven, I thought you were saying I was giving it to oh. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just uh expounding off of that because when I said seven, I thought your expression was like, Oh, you should give it higher. And I was thinking like, no, seven is seven eight, seven is I think seven yeah. is generous. I mm-hmm. give her I give her a C. She gave us a lot to pull from. She gave us a lot to think about, but there's not a lot to write home about. I feel like this is her best album in a while, though. I do too. And I think that's. I think that's another reason why I'm just like, because some there have been Brandy albums where I was just like, oh my god, like you're making it hard to be a Brandy fan. Exactly. Like, I hate like <laughs> two two eleven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, yeah. So that's why another reason why, and then that's another reason why I think also, uh, and like I, how you said she wasn't being Brandy. That's why, I, to me, I was like, I felt like this was the closest we've had to Brandy of old in a long time. And that's why I, just, I felt time. like she she was being Brandy. It's just that she, she was a little rusty at it. And that's how, that's how I kind of took it. She, in my opinion, she bought into the vocal Bible thing. She bought into the hashtags. Mm-hmm. Th- that was it for me. It was like, I'm that, a, that, that I'm can a, blow your head up. I'm going to harmonize the mess out of this. I'm going a, I'm to a riff and run this. But I'm like, fam, sometimes you just need to sing. Like those songs, like Have You Ever? Like you got famous off Have You Ever? You got famous off of um, Sitting Up In My Room. Like you got famous off of I songs song. where you were singing. You know what I'm right. saying? I love you, she probably. You're right, though. I think sometimes we let. She probably did let that go to her head, and yeah, you're right. Like those songs, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, I give it a six out of ten. Um, Brandy, congratulations on the album. Congratulations on um, dropping um, another. Um, well, well, for the Moesha, 
Um, I can't wait to binge watch that. I can't wait to binge watch that. Alyssa is, has entered the chat. I heard, I heard it. In, I heard it didn't age well. You heard Moesha didn't age well. That's what that's what people are saying. Alyssa, I you gotta watch. fix your audio. We can't hear you. I didn't say anything. Oh, okay, dope, dope. I can hear you. Dope. Yeah, hey, listen. Why I'm you make lie. that? Why you make that face? Which one? When we brought up Moesha, why'd you make the face? Oh, I mean, I haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet. I've just been kind of like re-binging the photograph. So. The photograph? The, how, do you the binge on the, how do you binge on a movie? You, you just, just watch rewatch it. it. You just oh, rewatch you just, it. Over and over you, and over? Yes. Is it Lakeith Sanfield? Like, does he do something for you? <laughs> yes and okay. no. So yes and no. So the photograph was, in my experience, one of the first black movies that we have that we don't see struggle of or toxicity. Mm. So, mm. and I know this because I am a rom-com aficionado. You know that about me. Mm. If we look back at every other, like Love Jones, Love and Basketball, like Brown Sugar, like all of those, we see like that toxic struggle with black love. And then in the end, it works out. When we don't really see any instances where it doesn't have to be a struggle and then you still get your happily ever after. You know what I mean? Okay. Hmm. Okay. So you're just watching that over and over. I, I, and I understand why. I, I understand why. It. I understand why. Um, so Alyssa has entered the group chat. Shout out to Alyssa Chester, who is the host of uh, Speak Brown Girl. Am, am I saying it right? Yes. 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 I was on I was invited once. Once. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why it hasn't been more yet, but I ain't we'll talk. We, we really need to <laughs> talk about that. Your responses were like, you know how I feel about this. Let's not even talk about it. Well, we got of here to talk about it. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that wasn't me. That wasn't me. That was He's like, but that do sound like you though. You can't. Can you deny that? That don't sound like you, fam. I wouldn't do that on air. I I get the people what they want. I feel. All right, fine. I apologize. I apologize. Well, she's the host of uh, Speak Brown Girl. But um, also hosting. With, I didn't give you the argument you wanted about the Brandy album though. My bad. Oh, we. Oh no no, it's cool. I think we I think we we did what we had to do with that for sure. Oh, did you you liked it? I gave it a six. <laughs> of, I gave it a six out of ten. I gave it a seven. Oh, oh. you listen, you listened to it? Yes, and I fell asleep. With, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that kind of I was not impressed. <laughs> yeah, I was impressed at moments, but. It's not Brent. It's not. I want to be down. It's not. Yes. It's not full exactly. moon. Exactly. It's not. Um. I think. Go ahead. I was going to say. I think even the seven to eight that I gave it came strictly from technique because the you moved to eight. You just said. Well, so. I said when I said set, I said when I started. I said I gave it a seven to eight, but really oh. I said like a strong seven. Uh, and I explained why I couldn't give it like a, a whole eight or a nine or a 10. And I, and I feel like mostly that comes from the fact of her technique, the things she, the, uh, like, like certain things she was doing, but it wasn't out of like, like I said, I really had to sit with that. It was like, it's like a, it's like, it was like a class. It, for me, it was like a class, like, Oh, let me sit and pay attention. It, it wasn't like, Oh, let me put this like movie on that has explosions and I can just watch it for fun. It will, it was it wasn't that. I literally had to like literally pay attention. And then when I paid attention, that's where the seven came from. But at first, I was kind of like, I'm missing Honestly, it. It just felt like you remember how fat Jennifer Hudson used to sing versus skinny Jennifer Hudson? You know what oh, yeah. I mean? Fat Jennifer yeah. Hudson has something to prove. Like, I'm about to prove this to you, right? Skinny Jennifer that Hudson is like, I ain't gotta prove nothing to you. I'm skinny. That's you true. already know I know how to sing. <laughs> and for me, it just felt like Brandy was like, I ain't got to prove nothing to y'all. Like, I didn't see any progression between, like, none of the songs. Like, you cannot 
I tell, for me, the first few songs, you couldn't tell what one started and the next, like one ended and the next one started. I, I just that. really, yeah, I, I really didn't. I was like, oh, she did this in a week or I don't, I don't know. I, mm-hmm. just like I hate when people do that, though, and they brag about. And they brag about spending only a week on their album. I'm like, no, nah, spend some time with it. Like, it's okay. <laughs> we in quarantine. Take the time you need. <laughs> that made Take me all mad. the time you need. Well, I'm, I want to finish introducing Alyssa real quick. I'm <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> so I wasn't sorry. done. I was, <laughs> Alyssa is a mother of three. Um, she's a single mother. I think, I don't think she has a problem with me saying that. I think I think she makes that a part of her identity. I mean, it is what it is, right? Um, she's a Christian and she is um, a theologian. So she's, she, you've said these things about yourself. I don't know. I'm letting the look that you give me just deter me. I can't, I can't see like, am, I, am I saying wrong things? I'm, I don't no. feel like I... It might be my settings. I, I can't see her. You can't see me at all? No, like I see it. Like it's, It switches to you. So it might be how I got it set up. Or it's how you yeah, have it set up. The gallery view. Okay. Shout out to Zoom. So, uh, <laughs> so I called. I called Alyssa, Alyssa and I asked her. I said, "Man, I don't have anything planned for this week because um, I'm going down to North Carolina and all of that type of stuff. I need someone that I could just." Well, I wanted Alyssa to be on the show, but then I realized it might just be me and Alyssa. And I'm like, "That's perfectly fine." We don't need anything to talk about. We can just talk about some things. And I was completely fine with that. Um, today is my daughter's birthday. She was born today. Yay! Congratulations! Yeah. And so let's talk about it. Let's talk about um, how fathers, black fathers, go super unappreciated and unrecognized. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. This is probably like the last thing a single mom wants to talk about. But hey, I'm in the thick of it. You know, and as your friend, I support you, whatever you want to talk about. Um, yeah, we can have that conversation. I, I, think a, I think it'll be a good one. I think it'll be a needed one. Well, what are your thoughts on it? What are your thoughts on what are your thoughts when people say that fathers are, or black fathers specifically, go underappreciated or unacknowledged? Like, what comes to your mind? You know, you might not want to give me the first thing that comes to your mind, but like, what what might be the fourth and fifth <laughs> thing that comes to you? You know, honestly, I think. <laughs> I don't be able to say something. Okay, honestly, I think it depends, honestly. And I'm not, I'm, I don't like, um, I don't downplay my ex-husband at all. Mm. Um, I think that there are very two, like, different ends of the spectrum. There's this one end of the spectrum where um, women praise dads for doing what they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, whereas if it's a woman in that same exact position... She doesn't get that same praise, right? Um, Every time my ex would show up to pick up the kids from school, they're like, he's such a great dad. He came to get the kids from school. Well, damn, they're his kids. He's supposed to pick them up from school, right? Right. You know, I don't see a parade every time I pick my kids up from school. Where's my parade? But then on the other side of the spectrum, it's like a lot of women keep their their kids away from their dad, their dad, because like I have feelings towards them and, you know, it didn't work out or I'm trying to be bitter and create this rough situation. Um, And like, you know, you've listened to the podcast where I talked about co-parenting with my Mm ex-husband. And the biggest thing is that um, if there is co-parenting, you have to be able to leave feelings and emotions out of it. You have to be able to focus on the kids. Um, And you definitely can see a difference in like kids' behaviors when their dads are in their lives and active and present. So I'm not saying like they don't, I, I, you will never hear me say the kids don't need their dads. You will never hear me say that. Um, But at the same time, (laughs) I think that if we, can be honest here. I think that we do need to talk about um, co-parenting equally between both 
moms and dads. I don't think that that's as equal as, as people pretend that it is, I guess. Mm. Mm. That was deep. But also, I was just, I was just let the awkward moment happen. I was just going to let it happen. I'm like, I want to see what happens here. I'm tired of telling people to talk in a little podcast. So I was just about to I, let it I was about to ask about your mic. But go, go ahead. My mic? Yeah, you, got a, you got a new mic? <laughs> For me? No, it's the same one. Wait, you use, wait, but is this, you didn't use the other one. Because you were using the other app, remember? Oh, okay. Um, but also awkward silences are good. It lets you know. Not on podcasts. The words marinate. Look. <laughs> Not on podcasts. On podcasts, they're called, it's called dead air. Dead air. <laughs> so, it's called dead air. Not good on podcasts. But you were, you were done. You were done. But Tobias, done. Tobias is my B mic today, but he don't, he don't know it. So I'm, I'm letting him know right now. Oh, I am? Oh, dope. Yeah, you my B mic, so you gotta hold me down. I'm not cool. What's All right, bro. I, I um, your on your show, you are the A mic. It's your show. And star is the B mic. So it's like the ah, host and then the person okay. that picks up the slack and like I'll be the mic. Yeah. Um oh yeah. Oh man. It wasn't supposed to be you. Huh? It wasn't huh? supposed to be your turn, right? Okay, Tobias, go ahead. T go ahead. Well, what I was finna say, I was just finna piggyback off of what you said about Guys getting uh I don't have any kids. All I got is dogs, but I did have my ex, she did have three kids. And and I I saw that. I saw um hopefully she don't mind me sharing this, but like I saw what like a like one of her son's dad is like was like involved, involved, like mm-hmm. like like they basically like he would stay one week with her, one week with him, and they they co-parented to the point where like I was super cool with him. Like they were friends. They and like they were like great. And then the other dad, <laughs> no, like, like, like he he would come around so frequently. And then when he did do something, it always reminded me of that Chris Rock joke when he would be like, You want a cookie for doing what you're supposed to do? Mm-hmm. And then of course he would get mad when like his son would be crying, and then I pick his son up and he would stop crying. And then, like he wouldn't want, he, he wouldn't want to go to his dad. And I'm just thinking, like, he don't really see you like that, man. And so, 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 or like, it's like, it's like, he would always bring up that thing he did that one time, and it was like, oh, I did this that one time, and then she would be looking like, and I was witness her doing all of this stuff, and she would be looking like, you're talking about what I did yesterday all day. You did it one time two months ago. Thanks. And so, <laughs> so, and so I, I, I witnessed that it is possible, like, cause they're like, like the, the one dad, Justin, he was amazing. And then I saw, I saw, I saw the both dynamics of it and I will agree, like just from even having niece and nephews, I, like, I literally, well, um, like my, like my, ne- my knee, my nephews whose dad is like super proficient and that's like my, they like my homies, but then my other nephews, it was like, it's always like, now that they're older, I'm like, man, I wish I hung out with you more because I, I, I see it now that you're older, like the, the things that you do. And I'll be like, come on, man, what, what, what was this? What? And so I see what was missing and yeah, it, yeah, I feel like, I feel like I have no leg in this race, but everything that you just said, I feel like from a distance, I have witnessed it and been like, yeah, like dads are needed, man. Where do y'all think that comes from? Um, the idea that di- dads don't have to do as much as as moms and the little that they do that they feel like they should be applause by. It. And, and of course, I'm speaking generally. Um, but um, we of course we do. We have seen that. We've seen that. We've seen dads go above and beyond and get little praise for it. Um, I definitely plan on being the latter more so the, than the former. Um, mm-hmm. But where do you think that comes from? Because it's, it's a generational thing. It's, 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 we've seen that generations before us and it, we've seen it being passed down like within the black community. Um, I think that's the biggest part of it, right? So we're seeing dads, this generation, right? 
Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. We're seeing dads, this generation, they're more active than the last generation and, and, you know, and so on and so on. And I think that's mainly because growing up, you know, the way that we grew up, dads were supposed to provide. That was their job to provide. The woman's job in the home was to take care of the kids. And so now that we're seeing either those roles reversed or we're seeing like one or the other where the woman is out working and the dad is at the home, like we're seeing all of these different things. We're also seeing our generation wanting to be better parents than our parents were. Not that our parents were bad parents, but just that we're, we're wanting to see that look different. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that's, that's what, where that stems from, honestly. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that's where that stems from. It's just that part of like, um, I want to be better than my dad, but also they have no blueprint to go off of, right? Because their dads were just solely supposed to provide, my dad included. Like my mom and dad were married for 25 years, and I can't tell you any of the memories that we had together. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, far as like activities that we would do or him changing my diaper or him doing my hair or anything like that. Right. Um, I can't tell you about any of those things, but I mean, bias out of it. I have seen my ex-husband do more for my kids than my dad did for me. And even though my mom and dad were still married. Right. Um, So I think that there are a lot of men that are trying to do better they just don't really have a blueprint to go off of. And I think that they are expecting applause when they're like, there's lots of men that don't see their kids. Like, okay, but (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I still need you to really um, step it up because a lot of black women, especially internalize a lot of uh, internalize and assume a lot of the responsibilities of the children, whether they are married or, you know, divorced or, you know, single parents or whatever, um, black women assume a lot of those responsibilities. Even if we look at a black married couple where both couples work, she comes back home. She's expected to feed those kids. She's expected to put those kids in the tub. She's expected to put them down a bit. And she's also expected to cook. And she's also expected to clean, even though y'all both were at work all day. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's disgusting. It's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely but I, I had to come before I go into my next question. My next question is yeah. going to be for you, uh, Tobias. But um, I had a conversation with someone recently um, about because um, we were, you know, I like to play with with scenarios and, you know, I like to hypothesize about relationships and what it would look like with different people. I'm sorry. That's just who I am. Um, I know. it. Uh, hey. <laughs> I'm like I'll, we'll talk about that. It is. I mean, it's. I'm like. <laughs> I'm like. I like to pick your brain. If I'm 31 and I want to pick your brain about the type of woman that you think that you would be in my life, you know what I mean? What you think we would be okay? I'm like, nah. I don't have to date you to figure this out. We can sit and talk about this right now. Let's talk about this. Let's figure this out. What type of person are you planning on being? Do you want to be this? And so one of the questions was. um what, can I work from home or or no, can I be a stay at home mom? Mm-hmm. And I said, you could be a stay at home mom, but the, but the bad thing about that for me is if you're a stay at home mom, I'm not, I'm not doing anything when I get home. Like if you, if, are you working at all at the house? No, I'm just taking care of the kid. I'm like, no, nah. No, no, because then I couldn't I couldn't see myself. I didn't I don't want to be the guy that comes home and was the breadwinner and just kicks his feet up because he did all the work for the house all day. I want to be able to come home. I want to be able to help you clean. I want to be able to help you take care of the kids and all of that type of stuff. But if you not work, I'm going to still take care of the kids and all of that type of stuff. But like, fam, you're not bringing no income on here. I, I think we both doing our jobs here. And that's just how I feel. I, I can, I can, I can see that actually. I feel like those, a lot of those times, there's those guys who, who do that, and they're just like, yeah, I provide for my family, 
But then a lot of times you get those guys who do it and then they end up like Denzel from Fences. Oh, like, yeah. Just, mm-hmm. <laughs> just like, just angry. I ain't got that like you. <laughs> I, I, you got clothes on your back, don't you? Mm-hmm. I think that's when resentment breeds, right? Absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's definitely when resentment breeds. And I think that's definitely what you see in a lot of like co-parenting relationships, especially with women in regards to men being like, oh, she's so bitter. Like, no, she is full of resent at the fact that this kid gets sick at three in the morning. She's the one that has to deal with the sick kid and still get up at 7 a.m. and go to work. And and still get the kid dressed, drop them off at daycare, still go to work and work eight hours and supposed to like pick the kid up from daycare and take care of that kid all the way home. And you got to sleep a full eight hours. Yeah. You got to sleep a full eight hours. Yeah. Like when I was married and one of those kids would wake up, I would put that kid right on his face as he was as <laughs> I will put that crying baby right on on his chest. Like I need five minutes. We knew what you meant. We didn't take we didn't take it any other way. Oh, we understand. <laughs> no, but that's my thing. If I'm if I'm working, if I'm working and you're working, the 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 load needs to be divvied up. It's not mm-hmm. it's not like I'm working and that should be enough for me. And then you got to work, cook, clean, take care of the kids, and then pay the bills, you know what I mean, and figure out what, what we're going to look like financially and all of that. No, I, I wouldn't want that either. That's yeah, the other end lame. of it. Yeah, that is super lame. And it's, it's not real manhood in my opinion, you know. And also, mm. like, so it's a few things. I posted that on social media today about how, like, Black women have to carry around just so much and how, like, even talking to a friend, she ain't gonna listen to this one. Talking to a friend today, I was telling her, like, I need to- <laughs> no, not like that. She just doesn't listen to podcasts. Mm, but okay, um, we also tell- are on YouTube. Everyone, you can find us on YouTube. If you're listening to this on podcast, you just search "Thank God for the Group Chat" and you will see our beautiful faces. Continue. That's oh. exactly what I was gonna say. You know what I mean, that's a B <laughs> mic. That's a me mic for you. <laughs> Um, no, but I was telling her like, man, I really need a deep clean, right? I really need my house deep clean. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, well, why don't you just do it? And I said, "Mm, I could, but I'm not. Yeah. I I have to do everything else. Yeah. And she was like, I mean, you could, if you just, you know, try a little harder to try and fit in like deep cleaning in between, like I had three whole kids. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And the fact that even black women, black men tell, you know, black men and black men, uh, women tell black women that we have to like, this was your mom. This was your mom. Your mom, this, your mom told you to do it. No, my mom is all for me getting a cleaning lady. Okay. I've had cleaning ladies over the years, but the past year I didn't. You told me. I don't think you mind me saying it. You told me your mom is the type of person that's like, if you can do it and if it can save you money, then you should do it just. Oh, she's handy. She so yeah. she's talking about handy stuff. Okay. She already knows I, you know, have a cleaning lady. Like that doesn't bother her. She gets frustrated when like somebody has to like come install the middle thing of the toilet and they charge me, overcharge me. She's mm-hmm. like, you could have done it yourself. But she got this I'm running on a little tangent, but she got a taste of her own medicine because I, I replaced that thing in in my toilet. What's the middle part of the toilet? Whatever. The meat of the toilet. I replaced the meat it. of the toilet. <laughs> That's <laughs> not what it's called, I can assure you. <laughs> that, that sounds gross. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking what about. Is, what is, that definitely a theologian. <laughs> That's definitely a theologian. I was right. You know, the crux, the crux of the toilet. (laughs) But I replaced it, and then, like, four days later, my toilet was still leaking. And I was like, I am just going to pay someone. Right. And so she was like, okay, I'm fine with that. So, but my friend being like, oh, well, just deep clean this part of the house one day when you get off work, and then deep clean this. No, that's too much work. If And if it were women of other races, Mm -hmm. they have cleaning ladies 
and nannies, and nobody gives them crap about it. Mm. They have nannies even when they're stay-at-home moms. But mm. when we want a nanny or when we want cleaning ladies or something like that, like we get the side eye from even other black women. Mm. Like I don't even mm. want to hire a black lady to come clean my house because I want to uh. clean it before she get here because I'm thinking about the side eyes that I'm going to get when she gets here. And she's like, your house should not be this dirty. She do you looking like that? That's a that's her job. Like, I'm glad your house look like this so I can work. Are black women so pressured? Are black women pressured by other black women to be superwoman? Yes. Mm. Never crossed my mind. Yes. I thought y'all was all in cahoots. Like we need to take the load off of us. It might still be. I mean, you're the woman, so you got to speak to this. It might be. It might be a both and type of thing. It might be so confusing for y'all. It's like, you ain't got to do everything, but then at the same time, you got to do everything. I think it depends on the woman. Mm. Mm. So I have some friends who are like, "Eh, don't do that yourself. Hire somebody. Like, you know, you don't have to deal with that hassle anymore. But then I have other black women friends that are like, no, do it yourself. And even like um, my aunt, uh, when I told her I had a cleaning lady, because I was making fun, because the cleaning lady looks like my mom. They both look like little Hispanic ladies. Um, I was making fun of my mom to my aunt, and I got scolded by my aunt that I had a cleaning lady. Mm. And she was like, no, you just need to work on sections of the house. I was like, clearly, you don't know how kids work anymore. Okay? Yeah. You clean they, this section yeah. of the house. Kids be in all, yeah. yeah. Yep. I, 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 I felt in all every area. Clean, clean. I felt my ex clean up. It was crazy. Also, I didn't know what a cleaning lady was until my sister got one. I was like, we could do stuff like that? I honestly didn't know. Was that but my I don't, house I don't, like, Say that again, my house, Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want a black cleaning lady. I can understand why. If it's like that, yeah. Because I'm already like, I'm, I hired one for two days from now. And I'm like, I came home and was like, oh, we got to clean up before the cleaning lady get here. Because the glares that I feel like this black lady is going to give me when she sees the condition my house is in, it's like, no, you hope knew you shouldn't let me get these dead. I uh-huh. hope and pray it's not like that. Yeah, the glare going to make you clean up the way she just walk in and walk out. Yeah, I, I hope it, that's that, that's so sad. I feel I, like, what you want me to clean? That, that's sad. No, she's gonna be like, now you know you shouldn't have let your house get this far. Oh yeah, don't don't come in my house like this, black lady. You the reason why my house is like this is so you can get paid. Now yeah, that, do it right. so you get out. You want his money or not? <laughs> right. Because they accept this green exactly. everywhere. If all the houses is clean, you ain't getting no money. Right. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Tobias, I, I um, can have a cleaning lady because I feel like I'm extra messy for no you reason. You say you are? No, I said I. I no, I'm a clean person, but I feel like if I, I said I couldn't have a cleaning lady just for like reasonings like that, like the fact that I know like black women now do that to other black women. You don't I have to even, hire a black cleaning lady, Tobias. But now, I know, but it's just like, but me being you can hire I, a white cleaning lady. <laughs> I feel oh, like there would be some sort of satisfactory to that, but uh, <laughs> oh, Beyonce, she said she brought up Beyonce. That dude was in the corner looking. <laughs> he was looking out. He, he, he didn't get that. He didn't get. I don't think he cared too much, but I think he also was thinking this is what my career has come to. What guy? There was a man. Um. And I really don't want to get into it too much because it's not worth talking about because it's just white people, white people. And again, and yeah, they, they were saying that it was reverse racist that this guy, this white guy was serving Beyonce. It's like he was a butler, but like white people can butler and white people can serve black people. Do you only think that it's black people's job to serve white people? It's not. And that's racist in and of itself for you to even call it reverse racist. So there's nothing to even talk about here. Yeah, that dude probably get paid more than I do. He did for that video. Yeah, if he if he played his cards right, he gonna get residual payment. Right, and he stood there. Yeah, <laughs> that's all yeah he did. They, they can be quiet. Yeah, that's all he did was saying. Um, real quick, Tobias. Um, 
I know that you have a, a decent relationship with your dad, so um, this isn't directed towards you, but I am asking you, why do you feel like um, the phrase fatherhood in the black community is so, like, why do you think that it brings, like, tears to a lot of people's eyes? Like, why do you think it's like a heart-wrenching concept for people? Because I can honestly say, so I feel like for what, I'll speak openly about it. I feel like for what my dad was, Mm -hmm. to me, is like what a lot of black mothers are to their kids. But what my mom was to me is what a lot of black fathers are. And so then, like, I remember one year on Mother's Day, um, my mom has passed, but um, mm-hmm. even when she was alive, she wasn't very attentive. And so then um, I remember one day on Mother's Day, like, our friend Adrian called me, and I was just like, I was just at the mall chilling, and he it blew his mind. He was like, it's Mother's Day. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, so, and so then... It, it it like to me i feel like if if that that feeling that i've gotten from like my mom of not feeling like 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 there's a lot of stuff that i realize now that my mom was dealing with that mm-hmm. as a kid i thought was my fault i thought i like wasn't good enough mm-hmm. i i um there's still stuff that like like going through therapy, I realized that that like there's stuff that I deal with that I, I never dealt with as a kid. And so then even as an adult, it still hits me hard or mm. or or like not to get too, too deep into it, but it even gives me a little bit of uh, PTSD or anxiety when mm. certain stuff happens. And then like like a lot of people like, who know me might e- might not even realize it in that moment, but something might happen, and then I might have like a, a like a clenched reaction, and I'll play it off, and and so then I hear stories about how certain people's dads were, mm-hmm. and and I think like, oh, and so then so then I, there actually even though my dad has been here, I I, I can honestly say I, I've never had. I'm grateful for my dad. I love my dad. I love my mom too, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, when 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 uh, when when people say something about fatherhood and people get sad, I, there was never there had never even though I had mine, there had never been a question in my mind of why are you acting like that. So because, but but I will say, uh, I hate that for people. I hate that. Uh, I think of that J Cole line where uh, where he was like, if they didn't want us, why they didn't wear you know. You know, and so <laughs> you can say and so, rare rubbers, and um, uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, and so and so that <laughs> that line, I think, of, I just think of like somebody like like I think of heck, um, my ex, her kids wasn't even mine, and when we realized we wasn't working and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. even I was thinking like, man, this little kid, like you know, during out this time, he's grown to love me, you know, and I love him or love them. And so then when I would be like, I can't imagine if that was like my, you know, like from me, because even in those instances, I was just like, man, like, you know, like it'd be like TT and I'm just like, you know, like breaking on the inside. And so I can't imagine if that was like just me, like mine. And then just being like, well, I'm out because I, I feel like I can be. Right. <laughs> and so then and so then I feel like that 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 uh, in the black neighborhoods especially I feel like it's kind of like like what she said earlier about people are trying to be better parents. I think it it comes from like that meme of like it was like two brothers and one's an alcoholic and the other is sober and then they asked them like uh, and their dad was an alcoholic and they asked the brothers like, well, why are you an alcoholic? And the brother that is an alcoholic said, well, I watched dad. And they said, well, why are you sober? And when it's sober, he says, well, I watched dad. Right. I think, I think it's all about your perspective. I think mm-hmm. it's all about how like, like I can't put my kid through what I went through while some people are just like, well, my dad did it to me and I turned out all right, but they're really not. 
Mm. Like they're they're sad and yeah. hurting. It's not in that yeah. Huh? The toxicity in that sentence. Yeah, so mm. they're really not. And so uh I think that when they hear that about fatherhood, it just brings all of that emotion up that they even if they have dealt with it, even if they ha- like like are like got proper help and all that stuff and are in, to a good point of mentally healthy and all that stuff, mm. it still hurts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um what do you think before we go, Alyssa, um if we talking about hurting, that means that there's some type of of course, there's some type of pain inflicted and so some type of healing needs to be taking place. And I hate the word healing right now because everyone's using it. No uh, likes healing. Yeah. <laughs> but how do you how do you you as a person who is an advocate for therapy, you as a person who has benefited from therapy, how can we quote unquote start the healing process of this type of stuff, like when it comes to like parental hurt and things of that nature. I think when it comes to parental hurt, we have to recognize that there is hurt, right? I Mm. think that sometimes that hurt is so deep and so like rooted in our foundation that we don't even recognize um, that it was hurt and trauma to begin with. Um, Mm. So my first, um, three or four years ago, I'm not sure. My first time going to the therapist um, in my first like little session, she, she asked me, she said, um, so what was your relationship with your dad? And I didn't even know, like, that's not why I was there. But then we started to trail down that path. And I recognized that a lot of the things that I felt about myself now or then and a lot of the traits and behaviors that I had was deeply rooted in my relationship with my parents. Um, and so I think that in order for us to even recognize that that's a thing, we have to be real with ourselves and say, like, because we were taught to never speak bad about our elders, right? Um, especially in the black community, we were taught mm. to never speak bad about our elders. And so I think one thing mm. that we really have to do is we have to be real with ourselves um, and, and say like, oh, The way that, for me, the way that my dad would wake, as soon as I grew boobs, the way that my dad would wake me up at 7 a.m. and make me run the track to, um, told me I was getting fat, later contribute to my body image issues, Mm. you know? Um, So we have to be able to look at those things and realize like how that brought us to where we are today. And then that way we'll be able to work through healing. Also, I mean, I don't, Hold on. Um, we got to take a quick break. Um, it's not going to be a commercial. Lime, put some music right here. We will be right back after these messages. All right, we are back. And um, we have seemed to stumble upon a very poignant and pivotal conversation about parenthood slash fatherhood. Um, Tobias, we cut you off. You were saying. Oh, uh, I basically was going to say, um, I think sometimes we got to, sometimes we got to learn the difference between just trying to speak ill on somebody and just speaking bad on somebody and just saying the truth. And I think that there's been a lot of times where I I would be like saying something about how I feel or how something made me feel or what happened. And then some like, some like how, like that happened directly to me done by whoever. And they would be like, Oh, don't, why are you talking so bad about me? And it's almost like, well, you did this thing to me and I'm supposed to just swallow it and never speak on it again. Mm. And, and so then that's what I took from when you said, when you said, um, we're, like, we're not supposed to speak bad about our elders. And I, I know that saying, and, you know, like lately, like, I feel like me and my dad and my folks, we have better relationships because there used to be a time where, like, I just wouldn't say nothing. Now I just be like, no, nah, dad, you did this. Like, because now he's he stumbled across 13 reasons why <laughs> and now he watches that show and then he'd be like asking me questions. Did I do that? Son? And I'm like, Oh, um, uh, yes. <laughs> and so then, um, absolutely. Then we have a conversation about it, but I think that like that barrier being lifted of actually being able to talk about that stuff 
and not be labeled as you're speaking bad on me. Like, I, like, yeah, like, I, like you said, we have to get to that point of actually admitting like, okay, this happened. Cause yeah. How does your, how does your, you know, the past that you've had with your parents, how does that affect you guys' dating life? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, not in the best light. There, there have been times where I will be dating somebody like really cool and really intuitive of, and then even with like call like stuff that I'm able to talk about now, they mm. would blatantly be like, I feel like like I was dating somebody one time and I was describing like a conversation with my dad or something. And then it was like, but you don't feel that way. And then they, they said, I don't think your dad knows you. And then I got offended, but they was right. Or, uh, or, or like there would be times where uh, I would do something and I wouldn't even notice that I'll be clenching up or balling up. And they'd be like, man, you're at, like, it, it would affect the relationship in a way where, I would even kind of revert back to seven year old me who thought that if I spoke up about something, mom was going to do something bad, but, I, but I didn't know that's what I was doing. So then, you know, you're like, you're having like a relationship with a grown mature relationship with somebody who is, who knows who they are with somebody who, who is healthy themselves with somebody who, 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 can thrive on their own and when you're having a relationship with somebody like that and you yourself is broken it and if you're not doing the work to (laughs) to mend those pieces then it doesn't work and i realized a lot of times my relationships this is this is gonna be a lot of times my best relationships best relationships were with people who were dealing with the same type of issues who didn't want to do better and so then, mm. and so then I, I would be, I would be the one that was like, oh no, look, you, like, like, cause, because in my mind, I'm th- trying to be better. So then this person who is like, who's, you know, those, like, we all have those, like, we all, maybe, maybe even us have those moments where it's just like, yeah, I throw tantrums and I throw stuff and I want to punch you in the face and I do all this stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm still a good person. And then, and then, me, and then, and then, me, and then me being me was like, well, I'm not that, I'm not as crazy as she is. So like, mm. you know, like, like, yeah. So I'm a, you know what I mean? Like you do that comparison thing. Mm. And then I realized those were like my longest or like, like not even healthiest, but relationships. And, and, it, and I even conditioned myself to, to, to find the norm in, in mental abuse in a certain ways. And so then uh, mm. like, like my partner could be like mentally abusive to me, it, but it was like, it was like home. Mm. It was like home from when I was like a kid and stuff. Mm. And so then I took it. And then, and then when I started dating somebody who, who wasn't like that, it's like, Whoa, what's wrong with, what's this? Ew. Mm. And then, and then in hindsight, it's just like, dang, I need to work on tea. Mm. <laughs> So I that's saw something I, that said like shared trauma does not equal compatibility. Mm, well, it's not and like that. That that kind of triggered when you said said that, Tobias. Like oh, we have the same issues. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, oh, my relationship with my dad really messed me up. Um, in a few ways, um, my dad was verbally abusive. He still to this day will not admit that he was verbally abusive. Mm. He still to this day is verbally abusive. Um, I have not seen him in a while, even though I go back home often, he doesn't let me see him. He doesn't answer my calls or my texts. Mind you, I have four other siblings and he calls them and talks to them regularly. Um, But I'll call him or on the off chance he'll call me and we'll be talking and he'll be like, He'll be like, what you doing? I'm like, oh, just cutting up this pizza for the kids. You know you don't need no pizza. Fam, you caught what you call me for. <laughs> right. You call me to be foolish. Yeah. <laughs> Get off my fucking line. Yeah. I don't know. Get off my line. You know what and I mean? what I did 
People think that they people think they funny. Mm-hmm. They do. People think they funny, and I, Alyssa, Alyssa is rolling her eyes at me because she thinks that no. I think that I think I'm funny. No, no, but, no, no, no. no. <laughs> but but Keith was going to say, "I know I'm funny." That's what Keith was going to say. No, Keith, I think you're funny. I mean, I don't think you're as funny as I am, but I do okay. think. Thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but that wasn't that wasn't my point. But people think they're funny, no, and think- that's and people don't know how to tell jokes. Like people think like their their rudeness is like a way of telling a joke, and I'm people like, man, you, uh, uh-uh, there's a way to do it, and you, your dad came in dry and just was like, well, also that ain't no damn joke when you not. have me, the only one of your my four sisters running around the damn track, and then I, because mm. I got boobs, and then would tell yeah. me, oh, you gonna be just like your auntie, and yeah. you gonna point me to the fat auntie. Like you instilled it in from it from when I was a kid that I'm gonna be fat. Like, yeah, why not be fat then? You would have already told me. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, black people, we laugh at our pain. We do. Mm-hmm. I told somebody the other day, I um, I'm my funniest when um, I'm sad. Oh, I know I am. If mm-hmm. I'm if I'm if I'm depressed, I'm super funny. Me too. And I like I watch myself now. I'm like I'm hilarious right now. What am I going through? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like I remember there was like a stint of time where I I was updating my Facebook status, and everyone people were like, "Tobias, you are so funny. You are mm-hmm. so this." I was so sad, man. I was mm-hmm. like, "Don't y'all buy the hype." I'm, I'm right. Sad. Don't buy the hype. I, ma- matter of fact, one of the stat one of the statuses even said that it was like a cry for help, and people just laughed. Yeah. I said, I forgot exactly what I said. I was like, "Hey, y'all!" I was like, uh, "I was like, hey, check on your funny friend. He going through something." Or, or like even one of like at work one time, like somebody was like, "Tobias, you got a gray hair," and then I responded, um, "I was like, oh yeah, this job stressing me out. Y'all giving me PTSD," and everybody laughed, and I'm sitting there like. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, I'm so serious. Like, that was I'm, my whole singing yeah, career. That's Alyssa's job. She's a funny girl at her job. I mm-hmm. am, but then I also be. Mm, ain't gonna even do that. I also be. <laughs> no, but you you were saying about your dad though. Yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> his verbal abuse. The mm-hmm. hands to, I have to tell my sister that thing too, kind of like that point that you just made about like people making jokes about serious stuff. She came mm-hmm. in town last weekend and she's like, oh, <laughs> Lisa, you know how I like to read into history and stuff. You don't do none of that. That's not even a joke. What? I was like, your, your jokes be a little too deep and too personal. Like, relax. You took that personally, Alyssa? Yeah, because... That's another topic for another day. But yes. okay, this is your sister. Yes, this is a sister. This, yeah, this is like deep rooted stuff. Yeah, yeah it's this probably is. like a sister that you were competitive with growing up or something. I'm not competitive because I don't care. I just don't be trying to be poor my whole life. So that's it. Um, <laughs> don't be take. Don't be. You throw jabs on your podcast. Don't throw jabs on my podcast. <laughs> Anyway, so what I was saying was the way that my dad talked to me and I always vowed to myself that I would never, never marry a man that was just like my father because my father was terrible to my mother. Mm. He only came around to visit us when he wanted to see my mom. That's mm. even to this day. They've been divorced like 15 years. He, when he comes to her house or pops up at her house, he's not coming to see us. Wow. He's coming to see her. Mm. And he has, obviously he has tons of grandkids. Um, but then I started to look for men that had those same exact qualities that my dad had. Mm. And what I failed to realize is when I got married, he was verbally abusive. Mm. Right. And another thing, another point to like black women and telling other black women to keep on with the faith and keep enduring a lot of women that I confided in to tell me like, Hey, some of the stuff that he says is not Okay. Oh, it's just out of love. It's just tough love. It's just masked as this tough love. Like, mm, no, that's verbal abuse. Yeah. Um, that's emotional abuse. Um, and so even when I ended that, I remember the first guy I dated, maybe the first few guys I dated after my ex-husband, they were verbally abusive. Mm. 
Mm. And I was talking to my therapist like, well, God, help me. That's why I actually sought out therapy. And so she helped me to see like these red flags very, very early on. And she helped me to be able to be like, look, this is what this is rooted in. And that's why you're attracted to that is because that's what you're used to. And that's what you equate as love. Mm-hmm. And so I equated like that cert- certain wording or, you know, a tone or like that crazy love to love mm-hmm. that ain't, I dated a young guy earlier this year. He said something to me to get a reaction out of me. And I sat there and I thought about it and I was like, mm, all right. He got mad, left, slammed the door, came back five minutes later and, and was like, I left something. I was like, oh, okay, here you go. He was so mad that I wasn't distraught and sad that he was like, you have no emotions. I was like, no, I'm just not addicted to dysfunction anymore. Yeah. Like, and, yeah. I've, heard, heard I've, I've heard that. Manipulate me. I've heard that from people that, that I've allowed to manipulate me. And then when I get to that point, I have gotten to that point where I don't, They, I have heard like, I feel like I'm a warm person. People, I have heard I am so cold, and I'm like, okay. You have no emotions. I was like, I you don't know me. I yeah. have all the emotions. For, you also have to understand you dating an older woman. I done seen it all. You know what I mean? I'm not moved by your little 25 year old antics, <laughs> scrawny man. Scrawny I know man. that. I know it was him. No, it wasn't. And it also, wasn't the scrawny man. Twenty nine. There was there was a scrawny oh, man. Was scrawny man. Sc- scrawny man is twenty nine. I apologize. <laughs> One of my ex boyfriend. I didn't like him. I he saw him. Too- I didn't like him. He was too small. He was too small. He was, he was way too, too skinny. Small. That's why he didn't he like muscles. it. Need muscles. Yeah. Keith, you sound like did my sister. Just, did you just do? I did. <laughs> Keith, 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 you sound like my sister though. Like every time I see her, she's like, "Oh, you losing weight?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And she'd be like, hmm. "I'm like." What am I supposed to be like? <laughs> Big and bulky and stuff. I don't. You know what I realized about about weight? You can't please anybody. You can't. You can't. The, you people, to no matter what size you are, people are always going to have something to say. When I was when I was when I was skinny, everyone would say I was so skinny. I was so small. When I got bigger, everyone would say, "Oh man, you've been in the weight room. You need to. You need to." Chill. I remember I was like I was at like. Maybe like last year, I was like, I was cock D's. And bro, my, dad was, you, bro. my dad was I, like, yeah, my dad was like, you, you, you ain't playing football. You need to stop lifting all them weights. <laughs> I'm like, when I saw you in those pictures, bro. I did not want to shake your hand. <laughs> I, I was just finger. going at it. Um, you know, and then when you big, when you, when I was, you know, big, when I'm bigger, you know, some people they like don't don't get smaller. I'm like, but I want to be smaller. You know, like, well, I I like you that size. I'm like, I don't like me this size. It's also, about what you I like. It's about what you like. What'd bro. you say? Also, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't care. I didn't care about who was saying it. I didn't. I cared about who was saying it, but I didn't care about their opinion. I mean, your your captions were funny though. I'm sorry. <laughs> see, I probably was being dead serious, and see. What are, what what are my captions? What was I saying? You, you were saying stuff like "tuck like, your summer." Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I like was I'm coming, coming, I'm, I was I'm coming, coming for you this summer. I was. I was. I was, and I remember at that time. That's when I started like running, and and so then I've I've never gotten like big, but every time I like I do work out heavy, I always end up just being like really slim. And mm-hmm. I was seeing, I was like, yeah, I'm really good by myself. And I said, keep you was all the things. He was like, yeah, like like check your summer. I'm coming for you. And then it's like it was almost like you looked at the camera too. You did, yeah. you know. I was <laughs> laughing. I was laughing, Cass. I ain't even gonna lie. But yeah. listen, <laughs> listen, you were saying what? <laughs> I was. Yeah. Okay. What was I saying? I don't know. Um, I tried to make y'all tuck y'all summer in this this summer, but COVID got the best of all of us. So maybe you know, next. I really don't care. Um, I really don't care. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I have so many like weightlifting videos of like me working out and I mean because I'm still weightlifting and stuff, but like I don't post it because I don't care what anybody gets to say. So like for me, you know, people I, be like, oh, I you're not lifting that right. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yo, I cannot <laughs> stand. I, I'm like, I'm I have like, a literal trainer right here. Yes. You want me to trust you over yeah. like my trainer? I can't stand yeah. that. I can't. Don't tell me. Don't tell me how to lift the weight. I'm in here. You not. 
Don't tell me, don't tell me how to lift the weight. <laughs> I'm getting results. You watching me do you you gotta go down more. You gotta squat more. Fam, I'm not trying to get no big butt. <laughs> I'm trying to lift this stuff. I'm not trying to have no shapely butt. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to have them cakes, yeah, right? Bubble, Man, bubble you butt. got the wrong one. You want me to do these girl squats to it? Like my stuff is sitting in the air. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to have them cakes, cakes. Yeah, like, oh, you're not going down <laughs> far enough. I'm like, first of all, fam. But I mean, yo, dudes will tell you. Dudes have ways of telling you that they think you're attractive. I've learned that. Hmm. Straight men have ways of telling you that they think you're attractive. I've heard this meant like a couple of times and I real I'm like I realized early like this is you think I'm attractive and you trying to find a manly way to tell me that. But there's no manly way to tell me that. <laughs> other than just that. saying other than just saying straight up, yo, you a handsome dude and keep walking. You know what I mean? I, I, I prefer it straight up. Any other way, I'm like, oh you you a little you got a little, what is said you got a little sugar in your like, tank. That's that's uh, what I'm wondering because I'm sitting here like what is said? I could what tell. What is said to make you feel like that? I could. I met a dude the other day. He he looked at me. He was like, "I could tell you get girls." I'm like, That's "No." Not a, oh wait, never mind. Nobody's ever. Said. <laughs> you said what? Nobody ever said that to you. Well, so no. Well, yeah. I can look at him and tell. And I just no. I know he get girls. Yeah. Get girls, okay. I, I, girls. It's, it's not. It's not phrased that same way. It's phrased. They say something besides girls. Oh yeah, this is yeah. this is thank God for the girl. oh yeah okay that yeah. makes sense. I know you get um, girls do right to say it so right. Well, I mean that's one. I of know those uh, Adrian though. I will say this. I actually have a song where the first where the first line in the song is I say I'm gorgeous, and Adrian mm-hmm. actually used to uh, when I was like in college and super 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 insecure. So like um I remember like like we'll be doing like group pictures and stuff and I would not want to take the picture. And Adrian used to be like like dude like like Adrian used to be like bro come over here and take the picture with me. And I'm like nah man and then like you know and you know Adrian's not gay or nothing. Mm-hmm. But he'd be like come over here and take the picture and I'd be like nah. And he's like what you think you ugly or something? And then I'd be like nah man and I'll get kind of embarrassed. Adrian like he would be like bro we're leaving for the summer. I might not even come back here next semester. You don't even want to take a picture with me. Yeah. Oh, if you think you ugly, quit all that right there. Like yeah. you're not ugly. Take this picture with me right now, yeah. bro. Shout out to Adrian, man. Everybody needs friends like that. Like yeah. even if you was ugly, you should have taken the picture. You know what I mean? I know. And <laughs> you know I mean? Right. Oh, Alyssa's like, I'm not saying ugly people need to take pictures now. Say anything. That's, I'm being good. She made, I'm she made the face like I don't want no. I don't want to see no picture of no ugly man and no picture. So. I think I think we need to <laughs> we need to t- we need that I'm moving on. We need to have more conversations like like this. Yeah. I, yeah, um just really just chopping it up. I've really enjoyed picking you guys' brain today. Thank y'all. Hey, no here. problem. Thank you so much. Alyssa, tell them where they can find you and what you're doing. Oh, so like Keith said, I have a podcast on Speak Brown Girl um, and season one with 20 episodes is on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, SoundCloud, all that fun stuff. Um, And yeah, it's a podcast centered around relationships and creating healthy relationships, whether that's romantic, friendships, um, parent-child relationships. that's it. You're in for a laugh if you do go ahead and listen. That's dope. Tobias, what you on? What you doing? Um, working on music. So y'all can check me out on Instagram, T-E-E-D-E-W-I-T-T. So that's at T-D-Wit. Or you can go to my website, tdwit.com. And, you know, trying to finish an album by September and have some music out there for you guys. I'm trying to... I'm trying to attract as many people as possible. And so T is the only one on this podcast that has a full beard. So all you people out here that are attracted to full beard, come check out our podcast <laughs> so you can get your fix. That's funny. Um, <laughs> this is... We'll see uh, if that works. What? We'll see if that works. Well, listen, right. I, mean, people, I mean, beards are in these days. 
Right. Biz, real quick before we leave, speaking of beards, Rick Ross versus um, Two Chains. Thoughts? Do we care? Do we not care? I didn't. You, you I don't care. care. I don't care. Alyssa, Alyssa got three kids. She don't care. Okay. I listen to good music, even though I have kids. I just don't listen to either of them. I listen, don't to listen to them. To I just music. because they degrade women. Do they? He does. Everybody forgot about Rick Ross saying that um, he raped a girl in one of his songs. Oh yeah, and that's why he got dropped from Reebok. Yeah. Yeah, that was that. Was yeah, that bad. was wild. I'm they glad like, we. Know. I'm glad we forgiven people. I, I hope he apologized for this. I, yeah. And the colorism that you know, all these black men celebrities have. I don't forgive them for that either. You don't forgive you. God forgives and you don't. Well, you would be a Rick Ross fan. I don't get the. Right Thank you. Ones. Tobias gets it, and I appreciate. I do get it. <laughs> <laughs> I do get it. Thank you. Um, this is Keith Roberson signing out. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I don't have anything else to say other than Bailey Daddy loves you. Peace. That's dope. All right. Peace out. All right, everyone. Thank y'all. No problem, man. Nice to meet you. Oh, she's on. (laughs) All right, bro. I'll see you next week, man. Thank you, man. Or probably later on, probably later on this week, honestly. Okay, cool, bro. Because yeah, we need one for Monday, for next Monday or whatever. Okay, that works. I, but I I know that we trying to get everybody together, so it might be this week, sometime later this week. Okay. Love you, man. Love you too, bro. All right, man. Peace. Peace.